over the next couple of days, I'm going to launch the boat at Beauty Point, travel around to Dark Hollow, which is only about five kilometres away, and spend the night there. And then I'm going to head across the next morning to uh, Bell Bay, which is a major shipping port in the Tama River. I'm going to cruise back down into Middle Arm, and then I'll weave my way through the flotilla of yachts that are moored outside Beauty. It's a number of years since I've been here at this launching ramp. In my late teens, I had a Gwen 12. A friend also had a Gwen 12, and we used to bring them here to sail. Uh, we also brought Moonlight and the boat that Moonlight was copied from here. Uh, one of my most amusing moments here was to see my friend in his Gwen 12 with his mast stuck in the mud. It's fully high tide, or actually it's an hour after high tide, so I don't want to muck around too much before I get the boat in the water. And you can see just down there, I think that is a native rat. It's a pity they were ever called rats by the Europeans, because they're simply not. Their indigenous name is Rakali. I like to think they're more like the Australian version of an otter. They're feisty little creatures, well able to stand up to a European rat, and I once had one try and climb into my boat while I was floundering with three or four of my kids in the boat with me. Very little current there at the moment, all the tide ha although the tide has started to turn, and uh, that means that with the absence of any wind whatsoever, the tide's going to be running through this way. So I'll be launching on this side and tying up from the bow and letting the boat drift away. I made some noise about removing one of those shrouds, so I thought three's a bit overkill for boat this size. Yeah. Man, you should have seen them get stuck into me on the wooden boat for them. <laughs> I, said, I said, I've had a lot of boats over the years, and the most I've ever had is two, most of them only have one, and I'm thinking about cutting that, but no. Yeah, you got two in the middle, one in the top. Yeah, yeah, so it's nice and, and stiff. Now the divers are out there doing things in true military fashion. I remember my first diving lesson was I said, how do you do this? And the guy said, you see this, you stick that in your mouth and you, and you suck in and out. That was my lesson. Over the side I went, and about 30 minutes later I discovered that the sucking in and out theory wasn't working anymore because I juiced up all the, all the tank. Uh, fortunately it was only about 5 or 10 feet deep. Anyway, somehow or other we survived, didn't we? I think she's sitting exactly on that water line, so the, the blue line um, is intended to be above the water. I'm looking forward to uh, getting out there and find my way around to a place called Dark Hollow. It's, there's no current here, which is nice. And uh, what I'm going to do, that's just going to slip off there very nicely. That makes it easier to untie when you just let it drift out. Now the wind's getting up to about 10 knots from the northwest, is the theory. Here. We have the Australian Maritime College just along here and this is the Australian National Underwater Training Centre. So the boys are out there today practicing their diving skills. This would be a good time to talk about situational awareness because while I was looking at my Navionics working out where I was going to go, I wasn't looking where I was going and I went a little bit close to where the divers were operating. I wasn't that close and he acknowledged me with a thumbs up or some sort of single digit acknowledgement anyway. The Horse World, that was a, uh, a government 
adventure. Um, and and a friend of mine bought it and it's a very successful tourist venture now. It's just a short trip of about three or four k's across to Dark Hollow um, but that's what they do here. Sometimes the, the boats don't even get out of the marina. There's Beauty Point, Beauty Point Wharf over there behind me and uh, Township of Beauty Point. So we've just come around the corner heading into Dark Hollow now. Uh, I want to get my bearings. Uh, first thing that I've noted is that I forgot to bring my bottle of wine, so I'm going to have to go back for that. Fortunately, it's not very far. Now it's a pretty stony bottom here, so something very strange happened and the wind came up from the south. I'm not quite sure how well that's going to hold. The wind's supposed to be northwesterly, 5 to 10, and then swing around to the east overnight. It'll all 5 to 10, and then back through the north tomorrow. There's potentially some gusts up to 20 in the afternoon. But uh, yeah, my friend's recommendation was probably if I'm going to anchor, the best place to anchor is just around this way a little bit. I'll see how much water there is there. It looks quite nice. I've never been down there. I'm going to disturb these herons. momentum in see this is truly a place of peace and serenity a look in here and see what all that work that I did on the stuffing box stern gland see what it's achieved the last four trips I've been sailing a sinking boat. Very good. It's just slightly warm to the touch. Established that the boat's not sinking. Just gonna have a bit of light lunch while I'm sitting here anchored in Dark Hollow. And uh, just get the energy levels up a little bit. It's been pretty hard going the last week. So this is the pontoon and ramp that actually goes nowhere. You get to the end of it, there's no track, there's no landing. There's this little tiny goat track that heads up the hill. Anyway, it's a lovely pontoon. My wife and I moved back to Tasmania after 13 years up on the Sunshine Coast enjoying the subtropical climate and everything that has to offer up there. We came back to Tasmania in May of last year and we've just had our first winter in 13 years. As we're just moving into the early part of summer, it's just lovely to get back. Those truly are savage things. Clambering around the rocks in virtually bare feet. It's just this rustic old track up the hill. There's a little mud brick house up there, much like the one that I built when I was in my early 20s. And there seem to be fewer crocodiles here than some of the places we visited in the last 10 years or so. Much to my consternation when I arrived back at Sarah Ann, I went to grab my bottle of wine and discovered that I'd left it back at Beauty Point. And so it was, I jumped on board, whizzed back across the beauty point, discovered that I hadn't actually left it there, that it was in the boat all the time, and headed back for some wine and oysters.
before. I suspect they think I may have been fishing. I've motored up to the farthest deep water part of West Arm, where it's about three metres deep. And if I go any further than this, it rapidly changes to about a metre deep. Just enjoying the solitude. I find that this boat just slips through the water so much that you only need a little touch, a throttle, and away she goes and she'll just glide all the way to the shore there now. The oysters really define some of the character of the shoreline. They've been here for a long time now. Drifting in a bit close there. I'm thinking that it may have been prudent to have the anchor more readily available. But I just popped her in reverse and there wasn't any current or any wind to worry about so she drifted around while I managed to get myself organised. kayak that I'm just going to join me over there tonight. Coming into Dark Hollow now and I'm not going to be the only person here tonight by the look of things. So blue beyond. got sick once from eating horses off the rocks but that was down at George's Bay or was it no it was on the Tamar River okay that's where we are <laughs> on the Tamar River never mind I need these little ones and they come with their very own rock I got my own diving knife here look at that perfect wow look at that together my first plebeian's review of Tasmanian wine and this is a nice wine. Their motto is Nunc es bebendum, translated as it's time to drink. In true plebeian style I'll be drinking out of my stainless steel fisherman's mug and I'll be washing away the greasy oil residue from my sardines in tomato sauce. In Tasmania, South Africa, New Zealand and a fair bit of Australia, pleb is a derogatory term for a commoner. I identify as a pleb. When the Romans invented the plebiscite, they allowed the common people 
you might call them today the upwardly mobile tradies, and they allow them to vote on significant issues. Mm. Just wash that fatty, fishy oil off the sides of my gut. But seriously though, it's so lovely to be on the water here in West Arm on Tama River. It's a bit like Queensland. Yep. Minus the crocodiles. Feel free to send me a case of your very best and I'll be sure to give it a plug. And I'll be honest. Good night, and uh, hopefully I'll be up to capture the early morning light on Dark Hollow. What a wonderful day it's been. Good morning. Here we are on a beautiful morning at Dark Hollow. Not a ripple on the water, not a breath of wind. And I'm about to shatter the solitude by starting up my Volvo MD1. Uh, there's a very active port and a, um, and a wood, wood chip mill over there. Then I'll come back and might head down into Middle Arm for some lunch before heading back to the boat ramp at Beauty Point, loading it back on and heading back to Launceston. I just turned the bilge pump on and it straight away went <laughs> i.e. no water to suck out. By subscribing, liking and placing a comment on these videos you make it possible for me to create more of them.